Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Friday morning as we bring you a show from another unique location here in the Florida Panhandle. Out straight from uh, downtown Southport. We bring it to you, and we're glad to be here. We sort of been, uh, uh, we sort of locked out of our studio because of, like we talked about yesterday, uh, some testing going on with some COVID and all, and uh, we're not going to be able to get in there for a little while. In fact, I was notified last night it might be another week, so we're going to bring you next week's going to be an adventure. I can promise you, I've always loved adventures. I don't know where we're going to bring the show from, but we may get up there too late and do a show. Who, who knows? Let's get our weather. High today, 90, low 7 to 9, and water temperature right at. It's right at 80.1, so let's ground it off to 80. Look at our uh, river readings brought to us by Mountain Dew. Get out and do. The Alpine Cola at Blunchtown, now it's pretty steady. It's been steady all week long. It's at a 7.3. So take a look at the chalk that's at Caraville. It's got a pretty strong drop to it getting ready for the weekend. It's at a 5.8 right now, but it's got a strong drop. So there'll be some exciting fishing going on at the mouth of those sloughs and those creeks as they're coming into the big river. And it's going to be some uh, it's going to be some good fishing this weekend on the Chalk to Hatchet. I can promise you. So Larry Brown, let me know what's going on. Ties are brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Not quite as good as ties today we've had, but uh, we still got a good tide. It's going to be high again right around noon, about 12:15, and it's going to be going out all the way to about 10:15 tonight. So we've got a good summer pattern. I've been uh, always been tickled with this summer pattern in July. It's pretty strong as far as uh, you know people getting ready to go floundering later on in late summer. So. We're going to be talking about that coming up, coming up pretty soon. Uh, wind direction will be south southwest at 10 to 12, and this, you know, again, we talked about how how unique the June weather was, and uh, you know, July is coming in right behind it. You know, we've had some wind and strong wind, a lot of rain, and it's just been a it hasn't been a typical July. It hasn't been a really hot, steamy every day like it normally is. All right, let's take a break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Glad you're with us on this Friday morning. I know a lot of y'all getting ready for some exciting adventures for the weekend, and hopefully we can help you out, give you some clues and all uh, to help you out. You know, if you're on Facebook, uh, every now and then you get, or pretty regularly you get, a, you know, a, a flashback picture. This is what happened three years ago or four years ago. This was your picture on the same date, and I, I really enjoy them, and they sort of uh, get the flashback and all. Well, the one I got yesterday was just really cool. Because uh, and I wanted to share this one. I don't share a lot of them. I just want to look at them and move on because they don't stay on it. But this is look at this picture here, folks. This was uh, 2012. This this time, remember the uh, scallop season was opening in July in 2012. And I remember my little caption here before I got a scallop. that said, you know, what a what a great place. Yesterday, I was 45 miles out in the Gulf of Mexico because I'd gone on a Billy Archer trip. I was 45 miles out in the Gulf of Mexico. I was in 190 feet of water and I limited it out on Red Snapper and, today, and Grouper. And today, I'm in St. Joe Bay limited it out on Scallops. Now, does that not put the Florida Panhandle in perspective, that picture right there, and all the things you can do one day, I'm doing all that fishing uh, way offshore, the next day, here I'm snorkeling in the water. So, and uh, you know what I'm talking about. And I, uh, the next day, I probably should have gone down to Howard Creek and I'd have made a trifecta. I'll do that, I'll do that again pretty soon. You know, yesterday I mentioned uh, Sky Bailey on, on free dive and catching that big old, or gigging that big old uh, red snapper. I read a little bit more details on it. One of the most interesting things about the whole story, uh, obviously she's good, that's number one, but you know what? She didn't go out to four o'clock. Her husband called her and said, hey, you want to run out real quick and see what we can do? At four o'clock in the afternoon. And of course, she said, well, heck yeah, let's go. And I love that kind of attitude. And that big old grin, here's another picture of her, a big old smile on her face, but she's pretty strong. A native of Mississippi, and uh, down here around the Destin area, and doing some really serious uh, fishing there. So good job, Sky Bailey. Okay, we got a bit of Grantham sent me a picture of his sister. Okay, my sister, Lisa Godwin, in the honey hole in Apalachicola. Lisa, that is a, folks, look at that fish. That is a big fish right there. Look at that mess of fish. Look at that big old bull brim. Uh, uh, man, I'm telling you, that, that is a fine mess right there. Way to go. Uh, Lisa, you need to try to teach your brother how to catch some of those fish. I know he has trouble catching a really big fish. Got an email, uh, you know, we had uh, 
Stanton and Show with Stan Crooker and I got an email from one of the viewers. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to read it to you. I surely enjoyed watching the show this morning. Winston and Stan together. I could sit for hours and listen and watch these two. It's a great show. Thanks. I'm from Port St. Joe. I live in Panama City now. I still go back to the St. Joe regularly. I still fish and scallop there. I am so ready for scallop season. Amen there. I have uh, lots of pictures I can send in from last scallop season. Had a lot of them they used on Channel 7 last year. Keep up the good work, y'all. And that's Richard Jackson. Thank you, Richard, for that really good correspondence there. We enjoyed reading. I share that with Stan because uh, we do enjoy doing, doing our show together and all. You know, summertime comes on. I look at uh, there's always a lot of enjoyment in the summertime. There's always sometimes some hazards and all. And I, I was uh, there are two hazards that jump out at me in the summertime. Uh, and it, one of them is, of course, the the uh, sun exposure. You know, especially as you get older like we do, and, uh, and you get you know some some skin cancers and all on you. In fact, I'm going to see Dr. Sunsair in my annual checkup next week. So. Uh, he's probably going to do all kind of damage to me, so we're going to blame him. And I'm going to get him to come on the show probably. When I go see him, I'll find out a good day for him to come on. Hopefully we can be out of Studio C and back in Studio A. And the other thing, too, uh, I think about uh, lightning and all. And we're, we're uh, you know, uh, last week uh, down in South Florida, two guys got struck by lightning when a storm came up. It right out the Tampa coast, and uh, they, were up, they were on the beach, and it, Storm came up, they started running back, and they got halfway up to the hill, and the lightning hit. One of them was in serious condition, the other one was okay. And it was, uh, it was one of those situations there. So, uh, But, you know, I talk about it, I probably talk about it more than I should. So I want to, I've got a good story here. I think what we'll do, we're going to take this break here, and I'll come back and share this story with you. Okay, welcome back. I know I had to close out that next last segment. I said I was going to read you this story, but uh, we did a big story yesterday, so I'm going to wait and do this lightning story uh, one day next week. So that's one thing I love about the show. Sometimes I just go by the seat of my pants, and uh, and that's what we're going to do. I was thinking of uh, trying to do a show uh, put together last night. I said, why don't I just show, show the viewers my little tackle corner? I talk about it a lot. I have show, I show little segments of it, but it's just something that's my little special place I've, I've had for a while, and it's, it's just a uh, it's a mess, but that's how it's supposed to be. I'm just going to show you some some highlights in it, and uh, we're just going to. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of junk here. One of one of my favorites. Uh, I mean, I got well, I gotta say favorite. This is my old clock here, the old Zepco clock. I found this at antique fishing lure show, and I had this made Chester bait and tackle. And my my love of old bait and tackle stores go way back to when I was a kid, and Daddy would always run by and uh, get some crickets and all when we're headed down to Lake Tackle. So then in this segment here, you can see I've got, this is my tackle, this is my actual tackle shop. I've got so much stuff. I've got them organized now. These are all my badonkadonks right here. I'll get, do you see what color, you see what color I like on badonkadonks? <laughs> That's all the stuff. I'm gonna show you some of my secrets now. And then I've got all kinds of stuff here. We've got some Z-Mans. I've got all kind of, you know, of course we've got plenty of, I, I like that saltwater bass assassin. I got, don't want to run out of them. And these old crabs here, those are good. All right, here's some big jig heads when you cast in for lean. And, uh, and then down here's just a bunch of junk. Right, this, this section here, I've just got all kind of drawers with different, different hooks and everything. All kind of, uh, you know, I, I don't know where I got from. So uh, one of my coolest things, right, one that really helps me a lot, believe it or not, these little screwdrivers. I use these things a lot. These are little, really tiny. And I don't remember where I got them, but man, they were invaluable. And all my knives up here. And that, this, Daddy caught this brim out of Two Loads of Creek. Now this one right here, uh, that's Two Loads of Creek brim. Right there, that's where I showed you all today. This one here is sort of special also. It was, it was a gift to me. I'm gonna go ahead and sort of set it down right here so Gail can get some pictures of it. Terry Lynn gave this to me, the Lynn family from down in Weewall. And this was, First of all, it's special because Mr. Self, right there, J.M. Self, taxidermist, Panama City. He's passed away now, but he was one of the best I've ever known as far as skin mounts. So this has fallen a couple of times. It's in pretty rough shape, but is the size of this thing phenomenal? I flip it over the back, right here. Caught by Al Harrison in Ammonia Lake fly fishing in 1982, four and one quarter pounds. Terry Lynn's got a name on it. He wanted me to have it because he felt like I would save it, and Lord knows I, 
I would save it, but now can you imagine catching that thing on the fly? It was that just phenomenal. So uh, wrap that right here. And I got it on it. I keep the table. I'll hang this back up later. I tried to keep this clean off, but you see, there's one of these Mr. Tackle boxes I'm gonna be giving away <laughs> when we get back to the studio. And this is this one of my outdoor ed kids did a project. This is a, a deer antler with a flashlight in it. I don't know if it'll come on or not. A little button there. I don't know why this is on a tackle bench. I need to put it over there with my hunting stuff, but hey, I'll put it over there. Uh, these knives here, this is one of the early knives of actually where when you're cleaning a fish, you go in the fish this way. Okay, first of all, you can scale it. You can scale, okay, so this is fish right here. You can scale the fish with this knife right here, and then when you want to gut them, you gut, go down like this and come up. Is that not a cool knife? I got a couple of these, and they work great. They really do. Okay, I got that. Some of this stuff just antique. Uh, here's here's all my re some reels I need working on. Okay, uh, that's some family tree stuff. This this is a gift up here. One of my students in outdoor ed made this for me. I, know, I always thought this was special. Okay, and uh, it, says, it says Panhandle Outdoors. It's got my name on it. It's a, a fishing dog. I thought that was special. This young lady now she's married, got two kids, Candace. Okay, and then uh, right through here, this is a little collection right here. This is Mr. Chuck Cars, the late Chuck Carr. He, he made these right here. Uh, he started out doing a crazy convict. He made some of these for me. They're very special to me. Not many of those left, not made anymore. Uh, Mr. Carr from Lynn Haven, and uh, he's retired from paper company, I mean, from the telephone company. And uh, okay, this little button right here, let's go outside. Is that not what we like to do? Uh, and check this out. You think that's a fishing lure, don't you? Look at that. That's not a fishing lure. Pull it apart. What is it? Over there. It's a rod. A fishing rod. I just thought that was cool. Uh, I'm not, I don't use it much, but uh, I just thought, thought it was cool. <laughs> and uh, and down here I got plenty of corks and all. That's a, okay, this is just junk down here. I didn't, I didn't clean up anything to try to impress you. Uh, some stuff kids made and uh, corks as a Father's Day card. <laughs> and okay, right here, Mike Edwards. See this collection right here? Mike watches the show. Look at these lures that Mike Edwards made for us. He does a tremendous job right there. Uh, and here's another one. Let me take, I want to show you what. Mike is very patient and he's a builder. And uh, look at that. Is that not beautiful? That's handmade by Mike Edwards. I'm scared to fish with him because I don't want to mess him up. That's just really cool. I'm going to put it up here with Mike's collection. Mike, if you're watching this morning, I don't you know I've got, got a collection of stuff for you. Uh, and this is, I got all kinds of other stuff too. Uh, but anyway, this is this is a little bench I come in sometimes at night working on my fishing stuff. And it gets me in a frame of mind uh, that, you know, I, I don't need all this stuff, but I'm glad I have all this stuff. And if you're outdoors, knows what I'm talking about. And so many times in my younger years, I couldn't afford enough of this stuff and I gradually built it up so where if I if I need help uh, I just you know get all this stuff and go and I have to run to a tackle store at the middle of the night. So uh, I'll get ready to go. Plus I got this is just one section of the garage. I'll show you some more stuff later on. So uh, okay so let me switch off to one more section now okay. Okay right next to the tackle bench is the door that goes outdoors here and I've always uh, in my mind I've always had my outdoor world and one, one, years ago I wanted to go ahead and uh, just sort of do, I'm not an artist, but I just wanted to one day just paint my outdoor world. So this is not, to, it's not to scale. It's just sort of the areas I've fished in my lifetime and some of my favorite places. I'm going to start at the top of this door right here. In fact, you can see, I, and I should have put, this is Winston's world, but yeah, I should have put Winston's outdoor world because my world is my family and, and my friends and my face. But anyway, this is my outdoor world, so I'm going to start. Over here, let's start over here. Left, this is Lake Seminole, and the landing we always went to, Aspalaga, which is below the dam. That's over in the Gaston County side in West Gaston. Okay, this is Sycamore. You know, Sycamore, Dad had a pond up there. Uh, well, had a lot on the pond, an old Sycamore pond, and I cannot tell you how many fish were caught out of there. And this is Lake Talquin. Okay, Lake Talquin. We talk all the time about Lake Talquin. Here's the dam and Oak Lock River. Uh, here's a Highway 20, okay, you know, going to Tallahassee. Uh, Tidoja Creek, where I showed you where Daddy grew up in this area, and Tidoja Creek goes across here, and into the, there's Hosford and Tidoja. Tidoja 
creek over here, and this is old Whitehead Fish Camp. That really was our go-to place for so many, many years and growing up, the Whitehead Fish Camp, and we would squirrel hunt over in here and fish up and down here and down in here. Man, I got so many great memories. Okay, along, getting back to the, over here to the big, what we call the big river, these are all the creeks on the Liberty County side that we fish. We had Kennedy Creek, we had Owl Creek, and we had Florida River. And But we put in from here, we, we didn't come down and go up like a lot of people live here, go up river. We'd come in from Bristol and all and go down these creeks. Okay, and then of course the Chipotle River where it comes in a wee wall, all in the area here. And then we fished, a, uh, when I got down here in Panama City, Ben Forehand and I fished a lot of Willis Landing, and you know, we caught so many fish out of Forehand Slough. And there's Humphrey Slough. And I hadn't even gotten over the area here, but now let's go over here. You are here. This is, okay, here's Deer Point Lake, Deer Point Dam. You are here. This is my house. Okay, what do you have right here? Burnt Mill Creek. What do you have right here? Crooked Creek. What do you have right here? West Bay. Well, I'm going to go way down here now. Look at here. Crooked Island Sound. All right. How about St. Joe Bay? Cape Sandblast. How about St. Vincent Island? Remember the little lakes we fished in St. Vincent Island? That's special. St. George Island. You know how I love to fish St. George. So this, and then offshore is the big pond. Now, I want to show you one thing about this. Looking back at it, you notice there's a line, right? See this line? Wavy line all the way across here. And, and what I want to share with you, in October of 1995, Hurricane Opal hit, okay? When Opal hit, the water got this deep in my house. If you can look close, you can see some of the debris that's still stuck to my door. And that was, what, 25 years ago? And uh, so I drew this a high water mark in Hurricane Opal. And Hurricane Michael came in the other way and all the trees fell on my house coming this way. So I've been hit both sides. I had Hurricane Opal come this way, Hurricane Michael go that way. So uh, we're still standing. So anyway, I just, uh, some of y'all probably have your own things and all. I drew this to scale. So okay, we're going to take a break, come back with our famous Friday fishing report. All right, welcome back and welcome to our famous Friday fishing forecast. But let's start off with our fishing game time today brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers down in Port St. Joe. Good folks, a bunch of good folks down there. We're looking exactly from 5 to 7 a.m. this morning and 5.22 to 7.22 this evening. I like that 5 to 7 this morning if you don't have to go to work early. Now, we usually do our you know, giveaway on Fridays. Well, our pickle jar is back at the studio. So we don't have the Los Anahitos giveaway or do we have the Tarpon Dock giveaway. I apologize for that. I try to make it up and I try to see if I can go get a pickle jar when things are closed up or whatever. I just try to get a pickle jar and we'll draw maybe spontaneously during the middle of the week or first part of next week. Okay, is that a good deal? I right, look at our forecast. One of the first things, you saw the brim. Look at the fresh water, the brim and bass have been tearing it up. Especially in the lower end of the Apparecicola. A river system, a lot of good fish being caught down there. And you saw the picture earlier, saw the picture earlier in the week of Ronnie Fowler and his crew. I think they had, they, they caught 82 for their July 4th fish fry. And I didn't get a call or anything from Ronnie. But listen, on the saltwater scene, I'm going to talk about one thing everybody's catching, well, not everybody's catching, the people who are going after them are catching a lot of, and that's the tarpon. We don't talk a lot about a tarpon on Friday, but the tarpon off the Panama City Beach Pier. They're catching the ones that know what they're doing. Uh, they got these big expensive reels, and they got a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom on catching tarpon, and they're catching them. Of course, you know, you just want to see them jumping, and they release them and all. It's a great story, and we've talked about it before. Uh, you know, when I did the research in my book, one of the things I was really excited about was seeing the tarpon that was caught back in 1920s, a hundred years ago. They were catching tarpon right out here in North Bay. I ran a Lynn Haven Bridge. In fact, you saw, if you look at, I'll show you some of the pictures next week. So, tarpon has always been around, but they sort of gone in, in and out of fashion. And in the 30s and 40s, they sort of uh, fell out of fashion. In the 50s, people couldn't eat them, so they don't want to fool with them. And those times in the 30s and 40s, they just want to catch fish they could eat. So, they didn't really want to fool with them. We had some sport anglers coming out from Birmingham, and they would be going out on some of the boats and catching some in, in the 30s and 40s. But, in the 50s and 60s, everybody just jumped on the red snapper and the tarpon again pushed back. So anyway, it really made a comeback and 
And then some of the local captains said, hey, wait a minute, they're talking out here. And, yeah, hello. And they uh, have been the whole time, and, but some of the local captains are already concentrating on them, and some of them do a really good job taking the clients out. I've seen some really nice tarpon being caught this year. So, again, I wanted to talk about how, how well the tarpon being caught. Now, let's go to bridge fishing real quick, because you can get, sort of get take an umbrella with you and get out there and fish off these bridges. Again, I mentioned for two or three weeks in a row about the drum bite, the, uh, the back drum off the bridges. And also, uh, let's go to surf fishing now. Surf fishing is going to be slow because we, that June grass has been here strong. I didn't, in fact, July 4th last weekend, I didn't do any surf fishing, uh, mainly because there's so much family around. We had to do a lot of cooking and just, you know, just uh, fellowshipping and all. So I had planned on, I did walk around the beach and look around, but a lot of June grass all up and down the beach is on the west end down there. It's on St. George Island, and but it won't stay long. So uh, it'll be surf fishing uh, this time of year, though. You get, get a lot of catfish. July and August is uh, uh, two, to me, two of the months I really don't do much surf fishing. So your best bet are brim, bass, tarpon and drum in that order so uh, keep that in mind if, if you're going out now also uh, the kayakers are doing good on trout and redfish trout and redfish body been been steady all summer long i've got good reports good steady reports from folks and all one one of the things is that a lot of kayakers are are putting in uh and, and going out fishing under the bridge at halfway bridge put in there car gray park on special on friday night a big group of them go fish for big redfish off the uh right up under the bridge. You want an outgoing tide. Remember that, that outgoing tide. Any kind of live bait's gonna work. Some people just fish with uh, these big jigs and all and fish for the redfish. So anyway, all kind of exciting things going on. And uh, if you want to bait fish, for offshore, offshore, red snapper still really, really hot. So keep that in mind and start making plans. I know a lot of y'all are, are gonna be going out this weekend. It's gonna be hot. So try to fish early and fish late and take a nap in between. But uh, you make sure you do something good for your fellow man. You have a great weekend, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.